we got a big topic today, nascent soul, what is it, where did the term come from, what does it mean, all these things will be covered, let's get right into it. For those of you who aren't very familiar with the Immortal Cultivation novels, nascent soul is a very, very important thing, it shows up in a lot of different novels by a lot of different authors. First of all, it's a level within the cultivation systems. In terms of how powerful these nascent soul cultivators are, they are usually quite powerful. Uh, in the novels that I translate, they're the type who can like, I don't know, destroy mountains, you know, kill lots of people with just, you know, a look or a snort or something like that. But they're not the most ultimately powerful. Uh, usually, well, in the novels I translate, there tend to be sort of like a few main sort of like realms of cultivation and the nascent soul people are kind of toward the top of the very first one. So they're, you know, beyond mortal and extremely powerful, but they're not, you know, the kind of people who can create or destroy planets and things like that. Uh, so it, it describes their level uh, and the nascent soul also describes something that is inside of these immortal cultivators. Usually after a certain point they make or form a nascent soul inside of them and usually it resembles them. Oftentimes it is in the form of an infant or a baby which I will get into an explanation of that in a little bit. A lot of times the nascent soul basically it is that person. Uh, it can survive the destruction of the body and then can you know, flee and maybe make a new body later or something like that. It's really the representation of that person. In terms of the actual Chinese word, this is it, I'll put it up on the screen right now. It's called Yuan Yu. And the two characters, the first one Yuan, this is actually a pretty common and complicated character that has a lot of different definitions as you can see here. And, you know, it's the word for money in the, or at least the currency that uh, China uses, the yuan. And, you know, it can mean other things. My wife has this character in her name. And in this case, though, the meaning of the character is something original, like f f the very beginning of something uh, that's just starting out to grow the most primeval, original version of whatever thing it is that you're talking about. So original. And then the yin character, it's kind of weird. It means child or more like baby, like a toddler level sort of baby. If you were going to directly translate into English what it means, probably you would go with something like original infant. Now, as for what exactly that means, I'm going to get to it in a couple of minutes. First, I'm going to talk about why it ended up being called a nascent soul. The story goes all the way back to when the story Stellar Transformations was first starting to be translated into English. For those of you who know a little bit about the history of Chinese web novel translations, Stellar Transformations was the one that really sort of like started the huge explosion. And I was one of the people who was hooked on Stellar Transformations and like many Xianxia cultivation novels, it had Yuan Ying in there. The translator of that novel, the original translator, did not translate it. He just had Y-U-A-N, Y-I-N-G, Yuan Ying there and I always found it very confusing. In fact, I remember thinking if I ever translated something like this, I know it would be hard, but I would definitely um, translate it instead of just transliterate it. And then a couple years later, I was in I Shall Seal the Heavens and it came up and I did have to translate it. One thing I want to point out is that, you know, there's no, I don't think there's a perfect analogy in English, but I think cross, the cross is a good example in English. Um, although cross, the cross is far more widespread in general culture than Yuan Ying, the nascent soul. Nascent soul is not something that like a lot of Chinese people know about. Um, so in that sense, it's not a perfect analogy. But the point is just um, cro a, a cross is something that you will see show up in a lot of different fantasy settings, whether it's vampire novels or sword and sorcery novels like Dungeons and Dragons with priests or paladins or something. And I think, you know, an, an author is not necessarily going to spend a lot of time describing what it is or what it looks like or its, you know, shape or something like that. He might describe its powers and that's what tends to happen in the cultivation novels is the authors, because all the authors will have slightly different versions of what it is and what it does. Even in one author's uh, different novels, it might be different. But the author isn't going to generally define what it is and explain it. And so in Seller Transformations, the author didn't do that. But then when the translator didn't go on to offer a further explanation, no footnote, no tr he didn't translate the term, it was very confusing. I always just didn't like it. So fast forward to I Shall Seal the Heavens and it's my turn and I decided I'm definitely going to translate it. I'm not going to have it be Yuan Ying. Again, I'm not a fan of translating 
uh, of transliterating things and just using the pinyin unless it's a name. Um, but for things like, you know, objects, items, levels, I think it should be translated as much as possible. So as for why I went with nascent, I'm going to pull up a definition here really quickly. I think nascent kind of carries along the idea of something that is beginning to form. So again, the UN character is something in its original early state that's beginning to form. And so I felt nascent carried that meaning and also sounds really cool. Uh, as for why I picked soul instead of infant, I mean, a lot of that hinges on the fact that infant or baby or whatever <laughs> just does not sound cool. Let's say that you were, let's say you were going to go with um, the most direct literal translation and you translated it as original infant. I mean, just no, that's not cool. Imagine this scene. Meng Hao steps out from the swirling vortex to find himself facing three men in black robes with murderous auras. They are none other than original infant cultivators. Like, no. No original infant cultivators who can destroy mountains and are super cool. It just does not sound cool in English, I'm sorry. So I decided that um, I needed something else to carry the idea of, you know, this object or, or thing that exists inside of a person that uh, is that person, it represents them perfectly, it can open its eyes, it can talk, it can survive the body after death, it can go on to live presumably for a really long time or forever. And when you think about that in terms of Western philosophy, religion, and whatever, I, I felt that soul was the perfect word to use to carry that idea. Not so much a translation of the character that made up the term, but what the meaning of that term was. And so that's why I went with soul. If I could go back in time and like spend more time thinking about it, I might try to come up with something else. But the thing is, I've seen a lot of discussions with translators, I mean, like in chat, chat groups and forums, you know, trying to think about what's another way you could translate it. And I have never seen anything that really does it justice. Either you have to pick something that goes with the actual meaning of the characters that sounds stupid, or you have to pick something else that describes what that thing is in general, which is what I did. The problem is that there are other words in Chinese for soul, and they're actually very complicated. There's two characters that, that mean soul, and I'm going to get into that topic in another video, but the point is just there are characters in Chinese for actual souls. And then what happens is you can run into a situation like I have in the current novel I'm translating right now, where there is a cultivation system based on souls. Not nascent souls, but actually the real word for soul. And guess what? Those souls could belong to people who had reached the nascent soul level. And don't forget, in nascent soul, soul is not the, the, what it means in Chinese. So then you have this situation, if you put them together, where you have souls of people who are nascent soul cultivators. So they're nascent soul souls. Not, I kind of have to play with the words um, to make it sound right uh, in this novel. And, and, but that doesn't come up very often. And most of the time, when you see the nascent soul throughout the novel and when it's described, the level, what it does, almost always nascent soul works perfectly and I'm happy with it. So where did this term come from? This is a very interesting story. And I have to say special thanks to my wife, Madam Deathblade, who did a lot of research for me. Um, I can do research myself in Chinese. It's just very laborious. And this was a subject where it, you know, required a lot of reading and searching around. And so she did it for me and I have to thank her for that. Otherwise I probably wouldn't have been able to find all this information. Basically the nascent soul is something from real Taoist philosophy or religion, whatever you want to call it. Um, there were, there was a sect of Taoism, um, began something, if I remember correctly, 16th or 17th century. It was called the Wu Liu School of Dao Taoism. The name comes from the fact that there were two guys, one named Wu and one named Liu, and they started this school. And they actually descended from the Chenzhen School of Taoism. Now, Chenzhen School of Taoism is, uh, again, it's a real school. They still exist today. Uh, they're also in fictional um, it, they're also in fiction. Um, if you have read the Condor Heroes trilogy, uh, Legend of the Condor Heroes and Return of the Condor Heroes, that sect, the, the, the Trenzun sect, is featured in both of those novels. Um, so it's, it exists in fiction and in real life. So the point is, some guys that came from this uh, Trenzun school started their own school. And in their belief, uh, oh, by the way, their, their type of, of Taoism focused on internal alchemy. 
very similar to what happens in cultivation novels, except this is the real life cultivation. According to their belief system, the highest level that you could achieve was to actually make a nascent soul. I'll show you a picture here. This is a picture from one of their uh, cultivation manuals. Again, this is a real, cult real Taoist internal al alchemic cultivation. And this is the picture of the nascent soul. Uh, in Chinese, this one doesn't use the character Ying for child. It uses the character Tai for fetus. So in this case, it's an immortal fetus. And here's a section, an excerpt from it, where it talks about it. Yeah, there's a translation. I'll link to this book in the description, and I'll link to some information um, in English about about the sects. There isn't very much information about the nascent soul or the Yuan Ying or the Yuan Tai. Incidentally, one of the synonyms of Yuan Ying is Yuan Shen. Um, in my translations, I've translated it as nascent divinity. Uh, it replaces the uh, child character with the character for God or divine being. And sometimes it is a it is a different level, maybe an upgrade of the Yuan Ying, but in other cases it's basically the same thing. In fact, my author sometimes will actually subconsciously go back and forth between the two. You know, it'll be sometimes even in one chapter or over the course of a couple of different chapters, he will be clearly referring to the nascent soul itself and he'll actually switch back and forth between those two different terms. A same person, um, same nascent soul, but he goes back and forth between Yuan Ying and Yuan Shan. So I think that kind of goes to show that the emphasis on this thing is um, how it's supposed to be something really powerful and really high level inside of you. Now, there's one piece missing, which is how did this Yang Ying nascent soul thing from a relatively obscure Taoist sect come to be so popular in immortal cultivation and Chinese fantasy novels? And that I really don't know. I asked Madame Deathway to try to dig up that answer for me and she did some searching around and wasn't able to come up with anything conclusive. I don't know who it was that used it first, uh, why it came to be so popular. Again, it's not like people you know, know about this term in general in China. In fact, I think most people I've ever asked about it don't even know what I'm talking about. So again, it's not like the cross where everybody has seen it and heard of it and knows what it is. It's pretty obscure in terms of actual Taoism. But it's super popular in all of the novels, and you'll see it in the games. Some of the pictures I showed earlier are from games, and you can see they're pretty pretty popular. So I don't know that missing link between the actual belief in this thing in Taoism and the fictional uh, use of it. One interesting thing, though, I do have to point out um, is that when my wife went into the Chinese search engines and you know typed in the question, basically, uh, where did what was the first novel to use nascent soul? The, f the first thing that popped up in her search results, not an answer to the question, by the way, but the first novel that popped up in information about nascent souls was Stellar Transformations. Now, I don't think that Stellar Transformations is the first one to use it. I really am pretty confident that it wasn't. But you know, I found that pretty interesting that the one that started it all in English is the one that came up first on the list in Chinese when she started to do research about it. So that's all the information I have for today. If anybody else has come across other information um, in Chinese that offers stuff that I didn't talk about, please feel free to leave it in the comments. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I have more on my list of frequently asked questions from Chinese fantasy novels that are going to come in the future. But for now, this is it for today. I'll see you in the next video.